topic I would like to talk to about today is Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh, Satan's and I Dragon. know that, you know, not very many people in the ACA play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, atheists aren't nerds, Linnea. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's a certain religious kind of unease, I will say, uh, to put it mildly, uh, around Dungeons and Dragons, especially when it first came out. And I think that, you know, uh, as to be expected, a lot of that is to deal with the source material that kind of treats um, demons and, you know, monsters very casually and <laughs> makes it into a game. And they don't like that. They don't like, you know, oh. uh, treating, treating such heinous creatures so casually. Uh, if I could just say, yeah. though, I think they probably took like 20 years to catch on to the Dungeons & Dragons trend. So now that it's a good bit later, I think they're realizing that Mortal Kombat exists. Give them, <laughs> give them like 10 more years and they'll notice Doom. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> now that Doom's come out with, with uh, the improved graphics. I was talking to Russell. Yeah. Uh, about that game's really good, by the way. Doom they, 2016. They didn't <laughs> and uh, I was asking him, you know, wh what do you think Dante thinks about these graphics? <laughs> like, do you think uh, Dante, if he saw the uh, the hell portrayed in Doom, whether he would be like, oh, yeah, you guys nailed it. That's what hell looks like. <laughs> so, yeah, how did you guys get it so accurate? Yeah. So I, th I think they don't like that. But I think, and this is just hypothesis, mm -hmm. not theory, because, you know, I haven't... Haven't uh, tested or you know examined this at all. You haven't shown people a let's play of Doom and see how the fundamentalists react. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doom, but getting back to Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, yeah, sorry, getting, didn't mean to derail. Uh, I th I think that you know part of what they also didn't like. You know, a lot of people tried to defend it and say, no, I I role play as a paladin or I role play as a cleric. You know, this is me expressing myself. Uh, as a holy person, as someone with uh, with devout intentions, and that didn't really help. And I personally think that that didn't help because what Dungeons and Dragons does is it creates a system where clerics can actually do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so in Dungeons and Dragons, faith healing works. And it works in a very specific, measurable way. Oh, you think it makes them look bad? It, make, it makes them look... I mean, in, in the Dungeons & Dragons world, what you, do, what you have is a system where you can test faith healing. You can say, okay, here are the clerics that have been claimed to be faith healers. Let's test, you know, when they say they cast a healing word, what does that mean? And they could come up and, you know, reverse engineer and come up with, well, they end up healing for some reason, uh, 4 plus 1d8, you know, or whatever the amount is, of uh, worth of damage to a person whenever they cast this healing spell. Yeah, I don't know what healing uh, 5 hit points look, looks like in sure. real life, but it's no? got to be pretty impressive. Like, you could have a gaping wound on your body, and it would be like... It, yeah, it stitches back together. It is a measurable improvement, a measurable change, and not just measurable, but consistently measurable. And you can you can uh, reverse engineer. All right, well, you can only cast these kind of spells at this level per day. You know, only these levels of spells or above can regrow limbs. I mean, which if, current preachers, none of them can regrow limbs. <laughs> If, if the amazing Randy saw a faith healer doing that in real life, he'd be like, Psh, here you go, here's your million dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, you know, beyond just, oh, there's demons, oh, beyond there's, there's monsters, there's evil creatures, you, get to, you role play as evil creatures maybe. I think that there's also the danger in that here's a world where these things are real, where the gods are real, and they have tangible effects on the world because they affect change you know they they imbue actual powers to their clerics to their paladins uh to their uh, i don't know if there's any other holy classes other than clerics and paladins i mean i guess druids get blessed so Nature i don't want to leave out yeah. pagans <laughs> you know uh so but 
the, the, that's a problem for these real life preachers where they try to cast spells. It doesn't have effects. And like, I, you I know, I think your I've, microphone just uh, got knocked loose or something. Oh no, no, I think I think my mic. Wait, is that my uh, headphones then? Am I good? Keep talking. Okay. Well, they'll yell it's, at you. If no, you, it's just it's you're just. Fine. Uh, I'm sorry. My Go own on. earbuds are not working with me today. Yeah, so, so clerics, clerics work in Dungeons and Dragons, paladins work in Dungeons and Dragons, and that's threatening to, to Christian people, and I feel like that's, you know, got, got to be uncomfortable, and I feel like that leads them to a place where they feel vaguely uncomfortable about this system, they feel vaguely uncomfortable about this world, and they don't know why. Uh, it just kind of rubs them the wrong way and kind of, you know, forces them into a place where they have to deal with these inconsistencies. Uh, and so they kind of just fall on the edge of not going to think about it. I just don't like this game. This is an old holy game, bad game, don't play it. <laughs> so that's my, you know, hypothesis, totally unfounded or whatever, but uh, yeah, that, about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that That's interesting and well said. I have wondered a lot why... Mm -hmm like Christians specifically choose to go after Harry Potter, but don't like seem to be particularly bothered by Lord of the Rings, for instance. I mean, as far as yeah. I know, like I've, I know that Tolkien is a Christian, and I feel like they don't go after C.S. Lewis for his Narnia stuff either, which is one big metaphor for Christianity. Uh, but I'm not sure like what the, what the algorithm is for figuring out if something is a threat or not. <laughs> Yeah, well, Lord of the Rings, I think that that might just be one of those things that's like, it's so old <laughs> that it's I mean, like, it's well, just, it's just from my generation. Yeah, sure. Uh, makes sense. 